This happened just last night, and honestly, I'm still a little shaken up over it. I'll try to retell the tale exactly as it happened, but my fear is sure to have fudged my memory a bit. I work evenings as a dispatcher in a medium-sized midwestern city. I was driving home at 2 a.m. when I stopped for gas. In retrospect, it was stupid to have stopped at all. The gas station was poorly lit and completely empty of any other customers, but I knew the shady areas of town and this was not usually one of them. As I was pumping gas, I noticed a middle-aged black woman sitting on the curb across the parking lot. It was a cold night and had just started raining. The woman was not wearing weather-appropriate clothing, so she was drenched. When the woman saw that I was watching her, she called out to me from across the parking lot. My second of many stupid decisions that night was choosing to engage with her. I was worried for her, so I approached her to see what sort of help I could offer. I don't usually give money to panhandlers, but this woman seemed genuine. The weather was terrible and my job centers around helping people, so I agreed. I told her I didn't have any cash, but if she would come with me inside, I'd take some money out of the ATM and give her a few dollars. But the ATM wasn't working. I apologized and told her there was nothing else I could do for her. She followed me back outside, chatting with me as I opened my driver's door to get in, and then she got in my car. I was too shocked to really say anything. I sat staring at her as she buckled herself into the passenger seat. As soon as she got into my car, her demeanor changed entirely. She no longer seemed forlorn as much as she did extremely, extremely excited and restless. Just take me to my aunt's house, she said. She can give me money. Of course, alarm bells are going off in my head. Although my first instinct is to tell her to get the fuck out of my car, my gut tells me that that would be dangerous. She'd already proven to be unpredictable. She seemed to be high, and I didn't know if she had any weapons on her. Where are you asking me to take you? I finally said. Just start driving, and I'll tell you where to turn. No. If you want me to consider driving you somewhere, I need you to tell me where we're going, I say, with no real intention of driving her anywhere. Don't worry, honey, I'm not one of the bad blacks. I'm not going to rob you or anything, just drive. No, I repeated. What is your aunt's address? Okay, it's on street A. What is the house number? As I was asking her questions, she got really agitated. We still had not left the gas station parking lot. I considered getting out of the car and going into the gas station for help, but A, she had seemed to know and be friendly with the one attendant that was inside when I tried to get money, and B, I wasn't about to leave her alone in my car. Finally, she snapped at me and said, Why are you asking me so many questions? I thought we were friends. You don't trust me? It's because I'm black? I work at a police department, I said. It's my job to ask this sort of questions. She flipped the fuck out. She started yelling at me about being a snitch, about trying to get her in trouble, just in general losing her damn mind. At this point, I'm more scared than ever. 
I just wanted her gone, but my instincts still told me asking her to get out of my car won't work. So I decided to take a risk. I am not a police officer, I just work at a police department. Why don't I take you to Walmart and see if they have an ATM that works? My idea was to get her out of my car as peacefully as possible, then lose her in the store. She liked my idea and immediately calmed down. I knew that driving off with this woman in my car was incredibly, incredibly risky, but it seemed like my best option at the time. As we are driving, she keeps talking to me. Her thoughts were erratic, bouncing all over the place. It sometimes seemed difficult for her to follow through one thought, but this is roughly how our conversation went. I'm glad we're friends now. I have about five or six people trying to get me. I'm going to come to your work tomorrow so we can go arrest them together. Okay, we can talk about that tomorrow. Tonight you said you're trying to get home? Yes, honey, I'm trying to get to City B. City B? I thought you said you needed to go to City A. Yeah, yeah, City A, that's what I meant. That's why the cab ride is $40. It's far away. The cab ride is $40? Yeah, baby. You said you have $40. I do, baby, I have $40, but the cab ride is $60. Silence. Are you sure you can take me to my aunt's house? She lives close by on street B. I thought you said she lived on street A. No, baby. I meant street B, but it don't matter, because she won't give me money anyway. You sure you can't just take me to city A? It was obvious that this woman was full of shit, because the details of her story were constantly changing. When we pulled into the Walmart parking lot, she finally got out of my car, only after I got out first, and followed me into the store. I told her, before we went to find an ATM, I needed to use the restroom. My plan was to call the police from inside a store, but she followed me into the bathroom, and that's when things got really weird. She grabbed the crook of my arm and whispered into my ear, if you don't got no money to give me, that's okay. But let me ask you something, sweetie. Do you like getting your pussy ate? I told her no as forcefully as I could manage, bolted into a store and locked the door as far as I could possibly manage. As soon as I had a barrier between us, I said, You know, I have some friends at the police department that can probably help you better than I can. I'm just going to call them and we can figure this out together. Again, at the mention of the cops, she started screaming at me. I just kept reiterating that the police would help her. She snapped at me that she was just going to leave and stormed out of the bathroom. But it wasn't over. I waited to make sure she was really gone. Sure enough, not 60 seconds after she left, she came back into the bathroom and started banging on the stall door and she said something that scared me more than anything else. Hey, come back to your car with me. I left my beer in your car. I tell her that no. I saw her get into my car and she had absolutely nothing with her other than the clothes on her back. After that, she left the bathroom again and didn't come back. I waited a good five minutes before exiting the bathroom. I immediately found a manager who called the police for me. Thankfully, I was in a different police jurisdiction from the one I work in, because I was mortified at how entirely stupid I had been the whole night and would have died of embarrassment if any of my co-workers had responded. 
the officer that responded took my statement and advised me to be more careful in the future. He said that sometimes panhandlers turn violent and that just recently there had been a report of a woman who matched my description, assaulting a good Samaritan that had stopped to try to help her. I definitely learned a lesson on stranger danger, and I'm lucky to have come out unscratched. I'm glad my stupidity didn't kill me. So Reddit, the next time you try to help a stranger late at night, don't. On a rainy night, in the era before cell phones, I was 18, walking a very long way home from work, and I foolishly accepted a ride home from a strange man, small town girl, and I just had gotten off a double shift. He was elderly, acted genuinely concerned for me, and I saw a Bible in the back seat probably safe, right? The car was old and broken down, and he had to get out to open the door for me. It took him a while, as he had trouble walking with a bum leg. He told me the passenger door didn't open from the inside. I immediately felt weird, but years of nice girl training told me He's gone to so much trouble. Don't say no. We chatted for a while, and he politely complimented my uniform, my hair, and told me I looked like his late wife, and that her spirit have led him to help get me home. It sounded very sweet the way he told it. The conversation turned to if I was still in school what my hobbies were like, and gradually turned to whether or not I was on my period. Which was rude, but he acted like it was going to be the punchline of a joke, so I laughingly asked him why he would want to know. He said very calmly, because if you're fertile, we should start trying for a family right away. Oh shit. He said that God had kept him lonely for years, but now, because I looked so much like his late wife, it was clear I was meant to be his, so he could start life over again, and finally have lots of children, like his wife was unable to do. He grabbed my hand and kissed it, and said, I can't wait to show you our new bed. I told him I forgot something at work. He told me I could get it tomorrow. I told him I needed to pee, and he said I could hold it until we got home. He wasn't going to let me go. He kept talking about how things were different back then, and how men are the head of the household, that women are to follow their fathers and then their husbands, and God says this and God says that. He talked about his wedding day, how his wife's father had given her to him. So I blurted out, you're going to get my father's permission to marry me before taking me to your home, right? God would want that, right? You need to do that because otherwise we would be living in sin. And the marriage bed is not holy. He got offended then and said he knew the Bible better than I did. And of course he knew to ask my father for permission. I told him that we couldn't live together in sin and we should go to my house before going home. And I reminded him that the street wasn't far. Still trying to keep the conversation light and joking. I told him that's what a godly man would do and he agreed. Then we go to the street where I had previously told him I lived. He asked which house was my parents. I gave him a fake house number, far away from mine. It had him drop me there. 
and wanted to come inside. I told him I needed to let my parents know about God sending me a husband before he could meet them. I said it would take a few days. Come back tomorrow. He said I'll give you a few minutes. But then we need to be on our way. I told him to drive around the block so I could have time to pack my clothes. He knocked and finally opened the car door. I ran to the house's door, waved to him until he drove away, then sprinted to my house, where I lived alone. Double bolted my door and put the couch in front of it that night. Never saw him again. I did not call the police, though I wish I had. I moved in with my boyfriend a few days later and I insisted on waiting at work until he could pick me up every night. A couple years ago, I worked at this 24-hour diner. Sometimes I worked the night shift. One day, I was at Walmart after an afternoon shift I worked, in my really painfully recognizable uniform. The guy in front of me had these crazy eyes and was taking his sweet fucking time bagging up his groceries and he said hi. So I just said hi back. He was like, oh, you worked a diner. And I was like, yep. He left the store. I bagged my groceries and walked out a couple of minutes later. Well, the guy was outside and saw me get in my car. He didn't follow me though, or so I thought. And that was that. So fast forward two weeks. I'm working night shift and it's 2 a.m. I was sitting outside smoking a cigarette and talking on the phone. This white van pulls up and guess who fucking hops out? He was like, hey girl, I've been looking for you. You remember me, do you? His eyes were bugging out of his head, and he had a few buddies in his van. I stuck the phone in my pocket. He grabbed my wrist and started pulling me to the van and says, Oh, come on, hang out with us. And I was just like, fuck no, dude. I yanked away and started backing towards the door and he kept asking if he could at least get my number. I just ran inside to the back and told my almost seven feet tall co-worker who I got along really well with and I'm still 99% sure has done some prison time, but they drove off. Two nights later, one of the windows was showed out during a night shift that I luckily wasn't working, but my co-worker said it was a bunch of dudes who drove by in a white van. This happened maybe 10 years ago, when I was in my early 30s. I was standing in line at the local pharmacy to get my prescriptions. This is a small town, and I am a regular there so they know me on sight. I was behind a couple of other people in line, and there were a couple of people behind me. I kept feeling a tickle in my hair, in the back of my head, but every time I looked behind me, their guy was a few steps back and looking at the door. This happened several times by the time I was at the front of the line. The pharmacist told me she wanted to talk to me about my medication in the consultation room they had at the time. I thought this was weird, because we both knew I had been on the medication for years and would be for life. Nothing new. I get back to the room and close the door. She told me that the man behind me had been stepping forward, sticking his nose in my hair and smelling before stepping back and looking at the floor. This shook me pretty badly, as this is such weird behavior 
especially in my little town. The pharmacist staff insisted on having me wait there until the guy was distracted by another pharmacy employee and they had a security guard walk me to my car and watch me drive off to make sure I was gone before a hair sniffer came out and saw what I was driving and what direction I was going. I still use this pharmacy and some of the same people still work there. I will always be grateful that they took the initiative to make sure I was safe that day.